Okay, welcome back. This is a Simulink demo on how to uh, import data from MATLAB. So let's uh, bring up the uh, Simulink um, object uh, library browser. There you go. And uh, let's create a new model. All right, there's a new model. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to sources, or no, sinks actually, and then put a scope in there. And then we'll go to commonly used blocks and put my MUC so I can get multiple signals on my scope. And then I'll connect the uh, MUX to the scope. Then I want to go to sources. Instead of using a sine wave or a unit step, I want to use this one right here uh, from workspace. That's going to bring it in from MATLAB. So let's drag it over there. Now I need to copy and paste. But a shortcut into copy and pasting is just select this guy and then uh, hold down the control key and drag. And there you go. I've created a second one down here. Now I'm going to connect those to my MUX so I can get both those signals plotted on my scope. And I'm going to call this guy signal 1. Okay. And I'll call this signal 2. Okay, now at this point, you know, if you run this, nothing's going to happen. You're only going to get an error because sig 1 and sig 2 aren't defined. So you can uh, have a MATLAB script or actually do it from the command line window to create those signals. So let's go to MATLAB and what we'll do is we'll create sig 1 and sig 2. Okay. So here, you know, I've cleared, uh, actually let's do this, clear the command line, command window, CLC. And then clear all, clears all your variables. Now, when you uh, create variables to import from MATLAB into Simulink, you have to set up a time base. And uh, the t default in Simulink is uh, uh, 0 to 10 seconds at a 0.1 increment, I believe, or 0.2, somewhere around there. So I am going to set up time equal to uh, that. Okay, so it's going to give me a vector of probably a, about 101 observations. Here it is right here. It's a 1 by 101, and you can see it. It's basically printing out from 0 um, all the way up to 10 seconds at intervals of uh, 0.1. But the problem is it's a 1 by n vector. We need that to be an n by 1. So what I can do is I can say time equal to uh, transpose on time. Oops, I've got to spell transpose, right? And there you go. That's the way I want it. Yeah, so we're going from 0 to 10 seconds, which will sync up with what my current Simulink time base is. And then what I need to do is uh, create some signals. Well, let's create a sine wave. Sine wave equal to sine of time. All right, there's a sine wave. And there you go. There's the data for my sine wave. All right. Then what I can do is I can create a signal that's in the format uh, signal that's in a format for Simulink. And what you do is you basically just concatenate those two column vectors. The first column was time. The second one was sine wave. Okay. Time is uh, n by 1. n is 101. Uh, time and sine wave are both n by 1s. n is 101. And then you put them together, and you're going to get uh, 101 by 2. All right. So if I hit return down here, there is sig 1, and it's 101 by 2, or n by 2. Okay. Now what I need to do is create another signal. Let's call it noise. And what we'll do is we'll use the additive white Gaussian uh, noise, additive white Gaussian noise function. And what that's going to do is it's going to add noise to an existing signal. So let's use the sine wave signal since that already exists. And then we'll give it a uh, signal to noise ratio of 10, which means the signal is greater than the um, noise by 10 dB. And you can figure backwards to figure out what that is. All right, so there's my noise signal. Okay. Notice it's positive and negative and kind of all over the place. But once again, it's a n by 1. Well, I've got to create another signal. Let's call it signal 2, where we concatenate those with the time base. Okay, There's the time. And then what we'll do is we'll put the noise in there. And now I've got sig 1, which is n by 2, and sig 2, which is n by 2. If I double click on sig 1, kind of see, yeah, the first column right there is my time base. The second column is my actual sine wave. Okay. So now let's go back to Simulink and, and run Simulink. Okay, see what happens. So I've created SIG1 and SIG2. Okay, there they are up above. I've got those uh, on these little icons from Workspace, and now it's basically just going to import it into Simulink. So if I run that, double click on Scope. Here's my scope. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Uh, maximize. We'll save those parameters. And there I've got two signals. One was just a nice clean sine wave, and the other one was a sine wave with additive white Gaussian noise. Now let's go back and play some games there. And um, what we'll do is we'll go back and recreate that noise. But this time, let's make it 20 dB. Okay. So now the signal is much stronger than the noise. And then, of course, i got to concatenate that back into SIG2. Okay. 
and then I can bring up my Simulink browser. There's my scope, and there's my model, and let's go ahead and run this now. And we basically increase the signal, so now the noise is going to be much smaller on the signal. So if I run it, and there you go, yeah, the noise is much smaller. Let's make the noise a lot bigger now. Let's go back to MATLAB and Okay, let's make this 0 dB, because that's a signal-to-noise ratio. So that means the signal and the noise have the same strength. And then we have to reconstruct that SIG2, time noise. And now if we bring back um, my uh, scope and my model, I run it here. What am I going to get? Well, now my noise is uh, much bigger. Yeah, so the noise is much stronger than the amplitude of the sine wave. Signal-to-noise ratio, um, we actually decreased it. All right, so there you go. Now, that's really useful because when we build control systems, what we're going to do is we're going to put disturbances in the control system. And um, the disturbances can come from programs we write in MATLAB. So we can uh, simulate any type of disturbance that might be uh, of particular interest to our system. Like in terms of a DC motor, we could simulate a load, a varying load, you know, increasing, decreasing, and then kind of see what happens. We know an open loop motor is going to, you know, the speed's going to change as that load changes. But a closed loop motor with your proper design controller should keep a constant RPM with a varying load. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.